Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral. And on behalf of Archbishop Comensoli, I'd like to warmly welcome you all here today. Those here present in the cathedral and those joining us from afar. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional Wurundjeri owners of the land on which we gather this morning. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here with us today. I'd like to begin by acknowledging a number of people with us today. First and foremost, Bert Newton's family, his wife Patty, their daughter Lauren, son-in-law Matt, and grandchildren, Sam, Eva, Lola, Monty, Perla, and Albie, who you can probably hear in the background. Unfortunately, Bert's son Matthew and his wife Catherine were unable to join us as they are in New York. We welcome Brigadier Robert Marshall, representing the Governor-General of Australia. Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desso, Governor of Victoria, and Mr Anthony Howard. The Honourable Daniel Andrews, Premier of Victoria, and Mrs Catherine Andrews. The Honourable Scott Morrison, Prime Minister of Australia. The Honourable Danny Pearson, Assistant Treasurer, Minister for Regulatory Reform, Minister for Government Services and Minister for Creative Industries. The Honourable Matthew Guy, Leader of the Opposition. The Honourable Jeff Kennett, former Premier and Mrs Felicity Kennett. Mr Frank Maguire, Parliament Sec Parliamentary Secretary for Medical Research, Parliamentary Secretary for Crime Prevention. Mr John Kennedy, Member for Hawthorne. Mr Anthony Albanese, Leader of the Federal Opposition. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome. To begin with, I invite you all to stand, please, for the Australian National Anthem. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are one and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing advance Australia This morning, we gather here to honour Bert Newton and share our memories of him in the many roles that he played in our lives as husband and father and grandfather, colleague, friend, entertainer and as a man of faith. I would now like to invite the Honourable Daniel Andrews, Premier of Victoria Forward, to offer his words of tribute.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my deep personal respects to their elders past and present. And I also acknowledge uh, Brigadier Robert Marsh, representing the Governor General, Her Excellency Linda Desso, the Governor of Victoria, and Mr Tony Howard, to the Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Leader of the Opposition Anthony Albanese, to the Leader of the State Opposition Matthew Guy, to my ministerial and parliamentary colleagues, many other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My grandfather, a devout Catholic and a train driver, absolutely loved Bert Newton. I'm certain it was his Catholicism that sealed the deal. He would often speak to me about the gift of faith. Bert Newton had that gift and I can't help but think that he'd be so honoured to be farewelled with a full requiem mass here at St Patrick's Cathedral. So on your behalf, can I thank you, uh, Your Grace, Archbishop Comensoli and Father Werner for having us here today in this very, very special place. Bert Newton was a great entertainer and life itself was his stage. He was always there omnipresent on our screens and in our homes. To Australia, Bert wasn't just a man on a screen or an actor on a stage. He was someone we all felt we knew. Like a fireplace on a cold night, families would gather around their TV sets, drawn in by Bert's warmth and sustained by his inviting ease. Bert was more than talent. He was trust. His story is the story of Australian television. And while he was first beamed into our homes in black and white, Bert was colour TV long before the technology arrived. He had a supreme talent, a gift indeed. And when things went off script, when a show went off the rails, Bert thrived. He was in his element witty, clever, cheeky. A consummate professional who mastered every medium with exquisite comic timing, research and rehearsal, discipline and spontaneity. A master of his craft, but true to himself at the same time. A highly skilled, genuine and authentic entertainer, one people respected and revered. He was a pioneer, an icon, a legend. But Bert's story is so much more. A shy working class kid from no apologies and no prisoners North Fitzroy, who loved trams and going to the pictures. His life, however, changed in June of 1950 when the 7th Brunswick Boy Scouts took him to see his very first live radio broadcast of a show called Peter's Pals. When, when Bert walked into the 3XY Spring Street Studios, he was just trying to get his Scouts badge. By the time he'd left, he'd found his calling. Not his love, we'll talk about that in a moment, but his calling. Every night for six months, Bert would come back to 3XY, watching on in awe. Eventually, he found himself on stage singing four verses of a song he barely knew. It was Bert's big break. That night at 3XY set in motion the birth of a star and forever changed the trajectory of Australian entertainment. While his career spanned television, radio and stage, Bert dedicated a lifetime to mentoring others sharing his wisdom and experience behind the scenes. And to this day, his legacy endures in the young actors, broadcasters and entertainers he helped along the way. But ladies and gentlemen, everyone knows that when we think and speak of Bert Newton, we are really reflecting on a duo, a double act. Bert's partnership with Paddy was everything. 
both formidable talents, both deeply in love. Theirs is a story for the ages. Christmas 1974, and Bert flies from Melbourne to LA and eventually on to New York to board a cruise ship, unannounced and unprepared. He's travelling with the hope that the woman he loves, but hasn't seen for quite some time, will accept his proposal of marriage. And during a rainstorm in the Caribbean on Australia Day 1974, she did just that. Bert and Patty were partners in every way. Husband and wife, parents and grandparents, best friends, entertainers, performers and soulmates. I do hope that the heartfelt tributes and the real sense of loss felt by so many across our state and our nation has been some small comfort to you, Patty, and your family. Stars come and go. TV shows are made and forgotten. And as time passes on, legends fade away. But not Bert. He was a boy from North Fitzroy who made it all the way to the top. He was a man of unmatched talent. He found a love that lasted nearly five decades. And he led a life that was full. He entertained his audience because he respected his audience. He never forgot where he came from and he lived his values. Compassion and kindness, generosity and empathy. Always working to lift those around him to new heights. Always so giving and so generous. Never for acclaim or fuss or fanfare. On behalf of all Victorians, I offer sincere condolences to Paddy and the Newton family. We are all richer for his life and poorer for his passing. Still, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can be certain that his credits will roll on and on and on. Valet Bert Newton. Thank you, Premier. Now it's time to remember some of Bert's finest work, courtesy of Channel 9. 1956 in Australia started an expedition into the wilderness of the then new medium, television. And yes, it produced a revolution in our lives, our customs, our entertainment. Studio One has seen millions of laughs, thrills, Moments of wonder and pleasure, lots of applause, thousands of shows. A cabaret where life is gay has found a house, a song and dance man. <laughs> <laughs> Something with the line. If I knew something, would I be standing here with you in a hunchback outfit? <laughs> Girls. <laughs> Girls won't go out with me. <laughs> Girls won't go out with you? Well, why do you think that is? I think it's because I haven't got a car. <laughs> Is. That was a good one. The question being asked of Delcy is how much water do we have on this earth of ours? Is it 25%? 50%? 7%? <laughs> 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 seven, 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 or 100%? <laughs> we ask for complete quiet and no helping. 50%? <laughs> Seventy-five. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>
don't sound like, like, like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Moonface. <laughs> I like the boy. <laughs> uh, did you say Roy or boy? I like the boy. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Roy. Yeah. Hey, hang on, hang on. No. Really? I'll change religion. I'll do anything for it. I don't care. I was overseas in battle when the postman came to me. Australian Post couldn't have been on strike. And when he handed me that letter. I was so doggone happy as I could be. You see, folks, the battle, it was over. The war had been won. So I opened up that doggone letter and the beautiful little thing. You know how it started off? <laughs> it started off. Dear John. extraordinary career Bert had and he certainly knew how to entertain. Thank you to Channel 9 for the compilation. I would now like to welcome Mr Eddie Maguire, one of Bert's many friends, to offer a few words of remembrance. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay respects to their elders past and present. Thank you to Paddy, to Lauren and Matthew for the opportunity to speak of Bert. And if I can be so bold, I speak on behalf of those who worked with him, who loved watching Bert over a lifetime in show business as the consummate compare and entertainer. I have the impossible job of condensing our feelings for Bert and his legacy into 4.5 minutes according to the Office of Protocol. But as Bert would say, well, we're live and I have the microphone, so we might go a bit longer. <laughs> Here goes. Albert Watson Newton, AM, MBE. To Graham Kennedy, he was Herbie. To Don Lane, he was Moonface. And to all of us, he was our Bert. Today, we honor his life at the state funeral and Premier Andrews, Paddy has asked and the family have asked for me to pass on their deepest gratitude to you and the State of Victoria for bestowing this honour. Since Bert's passing, there has been recognition of his incomparable comparing and performances, but what has really been underlined from story after story is Bert's amazing generosity of spirit. On camera, on stage, behind the microphone, Bert Newton gave of himself to make a show work, a segment pop make his colleagues look as good as they could be, to give everything for his beloved audience. Friend and colleague Peter Ford was one of the many with stories of Bert's generosity, of his noblesse oblige, to who much is given, much is expected, and Bert never forgot. Peter told the story, sworn to secrecy, until Bert said he'd carked it, of Bert hearing of a man dying of HIV AIDS at a time when sufferers were stigmatised and isolated. Not only did Bert visit and spend hours with every person in the ward, but gave the man one of his beloved gold logies. An amazing gesture, one that lifted the morale of all in the depths of their despair, with the only reward being that Bert gave those on their worst day something to remember as their best. Paddy had never heard the story until last week when Peter broke it. It did, however, go some way to solve a family mystery. Bert had won some 36 Logies over his career, but the family could only find 17. <laughs> Suddenly, it all made sense. It was just one of a myriad of stories shared by friends and colleagues and strangers and fans. Sam Newman reminded me of the famous Mr Anonymous speech written by Paul Keyes and delivered by Richard Burton in 1983 in paying tribute to Frank Sinatra, another giant of show business. I feel it articulates perfectly the essence of Bert Newson, Newton. So to paraphrase, Bert was a giant, 
Among the givers of the world, he stands tallest. He has more than paid rent for the space he occupied on this planet, forged as he is from loyalty and compassion, carefully hidden, hidden because he ordered it. I appear as the herald of grateful multitudes who have opened those unexpected envelopes, special delivering answers to prayers, those awakened by late night phone calls which remedied their problems, those performers, business people, politicians and the sick, down on their luck, who suddenly landed the role they never expected and still don't know who to thank, and for untold beneficiaries of the caring and kindness of this splendid man who truly was his brother's keeper. And they are legion, those whose lives took a turn for the better because of this man. Bert was such a legend that to be even acknowledged by him was to feel like he'd made it. When he named his toupee Eddie, he said at the time I was on everything else, I may as well be on his head. I was honoured and gratified. First, that he knew who I was. Second, because I'd become part of his act. But thirdly, it was pure Bert. A punchline, a laugh, but a nod of support to his colleagues. We've heard of people getting a segment on his shows, the note of congratulations, a phone call, a text, on your best day, but more importantly, on your worst, because Bert knew both. Shakespeare wrote in Julius Caesar that, it is common proof that lowliness is young ambition's ladder, whereto the climber upward turns his face, but when he attains the utmost round, he then turns his back looks in the clouds, scorning the base degrees by which he did ascend. The first part is pure Bert. The second is the antithesis. For Bert never turned his back on his people. He joked, he sent them up, he understood them, but he was always there for them. And he never left them. But lowliness was his young ambition's ladder. When Bert was a boy, having lost his father at age 11, the Fitzroy of the 1940s and 50s was a far cry from the hipster headquarters that it is today. It was one of the toughest parts of the country. It was a notorious slum. So fired by his imagination of what could be, inspired by the Morris brothers who saw something in this year seven boy who had a knack for radio plays, that he walked from his family home to the city, down the very streets outside this cathedral as a 14 year old to 3XY. One year later, he was on air. Self-taught, self-driven, what he missed in the classroom, he learned in the arena of life. Elocution, diction, general knowledge, music, panelling, timing, vaudeville. How to adapt in a fast-changing world, how to interview, how to perform. He cut his 21st cake on television and stayed there for his entire life. At 84, he was still making headlines with posts on Instagram from his hospital bed. Bert never stopped evolving, never stopped learning, never lost his insatiable appetite for what's new. He was the least jaded old-fashioned performer you would ever meet. Probably the first performer poached by Channel 9 from Seven, his partnerships have been the most successful and enduring in Australian television history. With Graham Kennedy, they lit up the small screen and would then do an encore performance the very next day on the radio. Bert, the perfect foil for the genius of Kennedy, never there to upstage, always to deliver. Later, it would be Don Lane. Live crosses to the world, Bert's wheel. Always there was this sense of adventure. As Sean McAuliffe said, waiting for the Bert moment that would be the talk of the schoolyard and the workplace the next day. That sense of danger, excitement in a suburban Australia. But also for us, that sense of pride as we watched our Bert match it with the best. To watch Bert with the likes of Sammy Davis Jr. and Demi Reynolds was to watch kindred spirits riffing it out live on TV, unrehearsed, unrestricted and hilarious. In a business known for its enmity and jealousies, there was no fluke that Graham was best man at Bert and Patty's wedding, that Don on winning his gold logie memorably said, six months at your house, six months at mine, pal. To watch Bert in his natural habitat at the Logies was a television highlight of the year. How he'd glide onto that stage, moving like a dancer, his newly cut suit, as he would describe it, his patent leather pumps, with that air of, I know you've seen all the stars and acts tonight, but get ready for this. 
that mildly amused grin on his face as he readied himself to bring the house down again. Alongside Bob Hope, John Wayne or an inebriated foreign star, it made no difference. Bert either made a performance great or saved the day. As we saw a moment ago, his celebrated sparring with Muhammad Ali was made even more memorable in hindsight by not the so-called faux pas, but by the way Ali realised there was nothing sinister, that Bert was a good man, the greatest new greatness when he saw it. But it wasn't just the superstars that inspired Bert's work. He never missed an opportunity. Ali was one thing. Belvedere and Moira, well, they became household names. Max Morrison, Peter Feynman, Peter Wynne, his great friends Pete Smith and Phil Brady, when you were part of Bert's crew, you were there forever. Bert encouraged so many. Hugh Jackman said, by watching Bert, I learned how to handle the spotlight with grace, dignity, honour and class. Rove McManus said, I lost a mentor and a friend. Our country lost an icon, but most importantly, a family has lost their hero and soulmate. Rhonda Birchmore spoke of Bert being there always with encouragement. Paul Hogan said he was Mr. Television, never took himself seriously, but took his job seriously. Philip Adams wrote, Bert is the electronic friend. He's there when you want or need him. Bert is company. Russell Crowe, Bert's not about fashion or trends. He's watched them all come and go. He's about intellect. He's about wisdom born of experience. My life is richer having him as a mate. Channel 9's Michael Healy said, Bert was a star. And Jane Kennedy, Bert would always support you talent, was up for the gag, he wanted you to succeed. New faces may have been his show, but behind the scenes, Bert lived its ethos. So Vale, our Bert, who turned a piano factory in Richmond into Television City, the first Melbourneian to become the King of Moomba. When the marquees dimmed, it was Bert who helped relaunch theatre in this town. He was a star on the wireless and ran the first sports-based radio station. He loved his footy and his beloved Fitzroy and his horses, fittingly passing on Derby Day, the day of the champions. He sang, it's time. He looked forward, not back. In passing, he has been recognised by the Prime Minister afforded a state funeral by his beloved Victoria with the flag of his country draped on his coffin, which Paddy said he would have loved. The other constant in his life is Catholic faith, his funeral here at St Patrick's Cathedral. Last night, the theatres of Melbourne dimmed their lights in Bert Newton's honour. 70 years ago, could that young boy have dreamt of what was in front of him? And while there was Bert and Graham and Bert and Don, there was nothing like Bert and Paddy. What a combination. Paddy, you shared your husband with us all. Your highs and your lows, your family, Matthew and Lauren, your grandchildren, who filled Bert's last few years with love and joy. There would always have been a Bert, but he was enhanced so much by his Paddy. Whether the Gold Logie becomes the Bert Newton Award or a theatre or similar be named in his honour, show business and this city will never be the same. The young boy from Fitzroy who became a star, then a legend, then an institution, and now our greatest memory of the golden years of television. Forever our Bert. Thank you very much, Eddie. I would now like to invite Mr. Anthony Kalia forward to sing the prayer. Anthony will be accompanied by Mr. John Foreman. Time. 
times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer. When we lose our way, lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be safe. La luce que tu das en cuore restará. Ricordaci che l'eterna stella sei nella mia preghiera. Quanta fede c'è. With your grace, give us faith so we'll be safe. Sogniamo un mondo senza più violenza, un mondo di giustizia e di speranza. Peter will read a tribute from the family. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I've lost a dear friend, a friendship that uh, has endured over, well, over 60 years. We became friends, Bert and I, out of a mutual love of radio. 
But over those years, my wife and I have shared so many wonderful private occasions, especially with Bert and Patty's joy at the arrival of their children, Matthew and Lauren. And it's Matthew and Lauren who I have the honour of representing today. With Matthew, I had a call lasting some 45 minutes yesterday, which resulted in him sending this letter, which I'm honoured to read to you this morning. I'm very sorry that due to the pandemic, I can't be with you all there to celebrate Dad. Growing up, I never really watched Bambi or Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs or a lot of other kids' movies you could name. I didn't want to. What fascinated me were the movies that created that black and white glow radiating through the doorway of my dad's home office. That's where I wanted to be. So by the age of 10, my dad had introduced me to Humphrey Bogart, the Marx Brothers, Elisha Cook Jr., Avon and Costello, Catherine Hepburn, Frank Sinatra, and on and on. They were our buddies, and Dad and I began a back and forth conversation about them that would continue without a break for the next 34 years. Swapping old showbiz stories and legends was how he and I, two Catholic Australian men of different generations, expressed our love and <laughs> expressed our love and affection for one another without having to actually say it all the time. We'd exchanged the same stories and bits, hundreds of them, over and over, not caring that we already knew them, just loving to hear them again and again. More importantly, hearing the other person tell them again. They were the conversational equivalent of playing our favourite songs. We were jamming together and we loved it. It was our secret club. I remember proudly telling Dad when I was a kid, hey, the books on my shelf in my bedroom and the books on the shelf in your office are all about the same sort of things, Dad. To which he replied, absolutely. Of course, the other way of saying that, Matthew, is you stole half my library. A lot's been said about my dad's sharp wit, but my two personal favorite off the cuff lines of his weren't said on television or even in front of a proper audience. In fact, there was only one single person present. One was a doctor, the other was an 11 year old me. Now, these lines don't have a place in today's proceedings as both edge towards being a little risque. Good morning, Archbishop. But what I love about them is that they were said to people who weren't going to further his career or write a great review. Dad purely wanted to pop the tension of an awkward situation and see another human being light up and laugh. I honestly believe that that was the thing, apart from his family, that made Dad the happiest. It was a superpower, and he always tried to use it for good. Over the last 10 years, while I've lived abroad, Dad and I would play our conversational songs over Zoom and FaceTime, tools that allowed me to connect and in a way reconnect with my whole family, but especially with Dad. Everyone knows he was a great entertainer, but what a lot of people don't know about Dad is that he wouldn't just be around for the laughs. Those close to him experienced how he'd show up in the tough times too, no one more than me. One final conversation a few days before we lost him was different from the usual, and we both knew it. The change was never directly stated, but we eschewed the stories and the laughs and just said how much we loved each other. During this wonderful chat, my mother was pottering around in the background, adding her two cents every now and again and doing lovely things for Dad, as usual. At one point, she took something into another room, and the second she left, Dad leaned into the phone camera and whispered, I think she's poisoning my food, Matthew. <laughs> well, we both laughed and laughed until we cried. Although given why we're here today, Mum, perhaps I should have taken him more seriously. 
Well, now, as much as Dad would have loved that tag, it really doesn't work, does it, Mum? Because, you know, there's not a lioness in the world who loved, supported and cherished her lion as much as you did, Dad. You two are a team, are a team. And even though your partner isn't on stage anymore, the show goes on and you'll be okay. Mainly because you'll have Lauren's 97 children to take care of you. Truly though, his grandkids became Dad's new favorite thing on the planet. And Sam, Eva, Lola, Monty, Perla and Albie gave him a new lease of life in his seventh and eighth decade. Dad was the ultimate host, or as he preferred to be called, compere, never presenter, a term he loathed. And if he was here today, he would be entertaining, moving, sincere and mischievous, expertly saying all the feelings of awkwardness and embarrassment, saving them from us. And that's how he'd want this day to be, with a wink, not a tear. So with that in mind, I'll get out while the going's good and say to the man himself, Albert, Watson, Wilberforce, Thomas, Patrick, Belmont, Francis, Archibald, Kenneth, John, Aloysius, Peter, Newton. I'm gonna really miss jamming with you, mate. Here's looking at you, kid. And now, this letter I'm reading on behalf of lovely Lauren. I'm not sure where to even begin, or if I could ever put into words how much I love my dad. From the love I felt as a child, to watching him laugh and play games with my own children, he made us feel so special and always brought laughter and fun to everything we did. When I was a little girl, I always felt I was so lucky. I had two dads, one on TV and one at home. He was the same funny, warm, wonderful person everyone watched on TV, but at home, he was even better. And I'm so grateful for the relationship I had with him. He was such a fun dad. And one of my favorite games with him as a little girl was called Donald Duck. He would put me on his shoulders and run around the house yelling Donald every time we came to a doorway. And I'd drop down and yell back, Duck. It always involved squealing and hysterical laughter and was so much fun until one day he got distracted and forgot to yell Donald. Obviously, Mum never let us play this game again. But it is a memory I'll have forever, and I can still hear the laughter from us both. Family always came first for Dad, and he included us in everything he did. He and Mum were a team, and he wanted all of us around and to be part of everything he did. He always made me feel very special, and I knew I could always count on him. When my car broke down on the freeway and I had to wait hours for a tow truck, Dad raced to be by my side and wait with me with a Diet Coke in hand for us both. That was him. He was always there when I needed him. And he was always interested in everything I did, no matter how small. He was the greatest dad I could have wished for. And he's been such a huge part of my children's lives as well. We had so many special times together, and I'm so glad that we had the chance to get to know Sam and Eva, Lola, Monty, Perla, and Albie. They loved Poppy so much, and his love for them was very clear to see. He spent hours playing games with them. His name in the games for years has been Bill Brown, and they played everything from mums and dads to schools. His favorite games were hospitals and hotels. And you know, Mum and I wondered why it was always those two games he liked the best. And then we realized it was because all he had to do was lie on the bed and rest while the kids played around him. 
The kids also loved doing concerts for him, and he was their most captive audience. He even got the job of introducing them, <laughs> and I'd laugh to myself, thinking they have no idea how lucky they were. He even put his good voice on as if he was doing the Logies. He loved it, and I could tell it was one of his favorite gigs ever. Although the past year was hard, he was so brave through it all. None of us wanted to see him suffer anymore, but we also couldn't imagine life without him. He was so well looked after by his wonderful doctors and nurses at the Epworth, and we're also very grateful for O'Neill House, where Dad spent his last few weeks. They looked after him so well, and it was a lovely place to be, even though they weren't the circumstances we wanted. He was happy to be there with Mum by his side. I will hold close those memories of sitting outside with him, watching the kids play around the fish pond and singing songs with him. We were lucky they allowed us to be with him so much and it felt like the next best thing to having him at home. Saying goodbye has been heartbreaking for us all, especially Mum. They loved one another so much and I know how he waited until she left the room to take his last breath because while she was with him, he couldn't have gone. My beautiful dad will be with us forever in our hearts and memories, but life will never be the same without him. I love you, Dad. Thank you, Peter, for those memories from Matthew and Lauren. The family would now like to share some of their special memories of Bert in a photo tribute. And now the end is near And so I face the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few But then again to mention I did what I had to do saw it through without exemption I planned each charted course each careful step along the byway and more much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there My fill, my share of losing, and now, as 
as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself Then he has not To say the things He truly feels And not the words Of one who kneels The record shows I took the blows And did it my way Yes it was What a wonderful tribute to Bert. I now invite you all to stand for the beginning of the liturgical part of our celebration of Bert's life.
Paddy, Laura and Matt, Matthew in the United States, all the grandkids, welcome here for this funeral, this requiem mass for Bert today. This moment in which uh, your farewell is united with so many other people's farewell that we also make as a welcome of Bert to his eternal life. Friends all gathered here and those who are watching on devices and TVs and so on. Welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral, this very beautiful uh, monument to the glory of God, the God that Bert himself believed in. And we farewell him today with the rituals and prayers uh, that are a part of the Catholic tradition. For many of you here uh, present in the cathedral and for those who are watching at home, some of those symbols and signs and actions may be a little puzzling, not being familiar with them. So I will try as best I can to give little explanations as we're going along. In particular, I just would like at the beginning to note the large candle that is a light at the head of Bert's coffin. That candle we call the Paschal candle or the Easter candle. It is lit for the first time each year at the Easter vigil and it represents the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we light it now at this funeral for Bert because we believe in that resurrection that is now for him in eternity. Friends, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Let us pray. O God, almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Bert, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to be seated as we listen to the scripture readings from uh, the Word of God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. I want you to be happy, always happy in the Lord. I repeat, what I want is your happiness. Let your tolerance be evident to everyone. The Lord is very near. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it. Asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving and that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. This is the word of the Lord. of the 
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared a place for you, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. As you enter the Newton home, just off to the side, there is a recently renovated room. It's not quite set up as it was initially intended, as it's missing the bed. But it still has much of the items and decorations intended for it. In this room is a decent sized TV, surrounded by cabinets and various photos and items of memorabilia. Most notably, there is a shelf full of Logie statues, I'm told significantly less than what ought to be present, and a great plaster bust of the one and only with Fez hat on top and a Morris Brothers crucifix hanging around its neck. This room, Paddy tells me, was meant to be the room where Bert was to spend his last days, in his home, among his family and surrounded by memories. Sadly, that was not to be. Bert never made it back home before he died. But he knew of where he was to be for his final days, and of the room his wife and family had prepared for him. This room, while beautiful and full of love, was never meant to be a permanent home for Bert. It was a temporary place, a place of sojourn for a pilgrim's weary body before the final pilgrimage to eternal life. As St Paul once put it, when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, 
an everlasting home, not made of human hands, but in the heavens. For an entertainment man, a man who made millions laugh and smile and sometimes cry, Bert was at heart a man of humble faith, of family love, and of unassuming care for the least. These characteristics are each features of the Christian life, of the three things that last, faith, hope and love. Bert had, in his own particular way, found a way of making these the truths of his life. We who knew Bert for his public life, perhaps these virtues may not have drawn our attention. But to those close to him, away from the camera and the stage, these are the elements of the good life that he lived. He was a sinner in need of mercy and forgiveness, was he not? Indeed, he was, like all of us, like all of us. But what makes someone close to God is not notable words or publicised deeds. It is the sinner who has been found by God. From an early age and through the ups and downs of his life, this was Bert Newton, a man found by God who lived accordingly in unassuming yet extraordinarily generous ways. Jesus promised Bert, as he promises us all, to prepare a room for him in eternity. As we heard Jesus say just right now, on the night of his own final day on earth, there are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going now to prepare a place for you. This was a promise Bert believed and trusted in. This is not the room from which Bert was to spend his final days, though that room in the Newton's home was and is indeed a room of love and life and personal tenderness. The promised room, long prepared for birth by Jesus, is a room similarly of love, though unconditional, similarly of life, though eternal, and similarly of tenderness, though uniquely divine. And it is especially and very personally Bert's. Imagine what it looks like. But even more than a promise of a place of eternity, it is a room where Jesus himself will be. As he said, where I am, you may be too. Our promised eternal home is home in Christ. As we gather to farewell Bert Newton, sorrowful yet grateful, might we not take to heart our own calling to not dwell solely in this world, 
but to learn to live for the world that is to come. As our own St. Mary MacKillop once put it, remember, we are but travellers here. May the Lord welcome Bert to the room long prepared for him. And may we who linger learn from our friend how to live the life to come in faith, hope and love. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Friends, I invite you to stand now as we offer our prayers of intercession, known as the prayer of the faithful. My dear friends, let us join with one another in prayer, not only for our brother Bert, but for all who are gathered here today in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Heavenly Father, we pray in thanksgiving for all of Bert's many friends and colleagues that loved and supported him throughout his life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend Poppy to your mercy and care. Welcome him home to heaven where there will be no more sorrow or pain, but only peace and happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for Nana and all our family and friends gathered here today. May we find comfort in Poppy's example of love and friendship. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for Poppy up in heaven. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we remember and hold close to us those who could not be here today, especially those members of Bert's family and his many friends who have gone before us, marked with the signs of faith. May we be reunited with them one day in our heavenly home. Lord, hear us. God of creation and light of the world, you bring hope and consolation to those who mourn. Hear our prayers in the name of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated.
Excellent. And well read as well. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Hoo hoo. Did that well. Well done. <laughs> she did well, didn't she? <laughs> oh. There we go. Thanks, kids. Thank you. Okay. I invite you to stand. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Bert, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour, may find him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. In our Catholic tradition, uh, this part now that we enter into is the most sacred part of this liturgy, this service that we uh, undertake, generally known in its, uh, in its Greek language, the Eucharist or Eucharistic prayer, but it's a prayer essentially of thanksgiving, that these, these gifts that we have of bread and wine, that they might indeed become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an everlasting dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. those who can, if their knees are up to it, 
I invite you to kneel or otherwise sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Bert, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Patrick, Saint Mary of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever.
At our Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And in a COVID safe way, turn to one another and offer a gift of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Come for us, the body and blood of our Lord, is received by our Catholics, those in communion with the Catholic Church, uh, in Holy Communion. So for those here present in the cathedral um, who are Catholics and uh, come forward in good faith to receive the Lord, uh, I invite you to do so. There will be four places where there will be uh, Holy Communion distributed, two here in the front for the, um, the main section of our cathedral, and a person on either side for those in the side aisles. There are uh, dispensing, sanitising dispensing stations available as you come forward for the sanitising of your hands uh, as you uh, receive Holy Communion. For those who are, are not Catholic or uh, might wish to receive a blessing, you may come forward for a blessing and I would invite you to cross over your hands, over your uh, arms so that we know that you're here for a blessing. So 
you need to go to the
Let us stand and pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Bert may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to be seated now. Good morning. An Irish blessing, which was one of Bert's favourite pieces. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. May God be with you and bless you. May you see your children's children. May you be poor in misfortune, rich in blessings. May you know nothing but happiness from this day forward. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the warm rays of sun fall upon your home. And may the hand of a friend be always near. May green be the grass you walk upon. May blue be the skies above you. May pure be the joys that surround you. May true be the hearts that love you. Amen. Friends, we now come to the uh, final farewell in prayer uh, for Bert. And again, in our Catholic tradition, there are various uh, prayers and uh, symbols that are used at this particular moment. I pointed out at the beginning of our Mass the Easter candle that has been alight and burning here at the head of uh, Bert's coffin. In a few moments, uh, in a moment of prayer also, I will uh, sprinkle holy water on uh, Bert's coffin as a reminder of his baptism. For Christians to be baptised is to enter into the life of Jesus Christ, enter into his death and resurrection. And so as a reminder of the promise that was made to him at his baptism and now fulfilled in his death, we sprinkle holy water upon his coffin. I'll also incense his coffin, not for some sort of odd reason, it, it's, it's for reason to honour that body of his, which was the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then in, as an act of honour, we uh, incense, and you might want to think of as the smoke arises, and uh, as your own prayers arising to God uh, for Bert's eternal life.
Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Bert, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the sure hope that one day we shall see Bert again and enjoy his friendship. Although this community will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Bert in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, Bert will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bert in his life. These are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother Bert forever. Amen. Amen. And in peace, let us now take our brother Bert to his place of rest. <laughs> 